This is one of those fire pits. I got one over there upside down, one there. I got three more in the front that's under a tarp. But anyway, this is what I was talking about. That's a pretty good gap right there. That's probably at least a quarter inch gap. And you can see over here, it's good and tight right there. This one is kind of tight on this end, loose on that end. Some of the side ones are, they gap, they gap open at the top, kind of tighten down at the bottom, which isn't bad. All of the side ones and I guess the 2G position, they're all pretty good. But uh, I know I got this one and I got a pretty good one over there. And it's kind of gapped open right there. So anyway, some of these gaps aren't a problem at all. Some of them are actually preferable that you can make the weld lay down flatter in it like this one that right there is pretty good it's 3 16 plate if it was 8 inch plate I wouldn't like that at all but uh with 3 16 or thicker that right there I kind of like that gap right there because I can get the weld to lay down good and flat in it but this right here I'm not going to be able to keep up with it I already know I can't so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the heat down on this machine and uh Again, on this machine, it don't have the voltage. It has the letters on it. So what I'm going to do is turn it down to C and just under 3 on wire speed. And come over here and run passes along the edge of the plate. Not trying to fill the gap up. Just trying to run a pass along the edge of that plate. And then I'll come back and run a pass along the edge of this plate. And it... In a sense, that's going to fill up some of that gap. You don't, you want to turn your heat down cooler than what you're going to weld it with, because it just it'll burn into it and try to lay flatter. And I mean, this is it's a good technique for some stuff. I'm sure some stuff you can't do it on, but uh, it's going to work for this. And so I'm going to get into that. I'm going to run a pass, like I say, run a pass across there, and then run a pass across there, and that's going to close it up a little bit. And we'll look at it then. All right, that's a pass across the top lip and the bottom lip. And that closed it down to about an eighth inch gap. I mean, that's that's very weldable there. It connected a little bit right there. It's no big deal. And you can see I stepped too fast right there. Let me find something to point at it with. Stepped a little fast right there, but that's not gonna hurt nothing. And so that was, that's going to make that plenty weldable. I'll let that cool off a little bit and then come back, turn my amperage back up. And uh, I've got to figure out a gauge on this thing. that will tell me the voltage and numbers. But anyway, on that one, I'll turn it back to D and uh, about three and a half to weld that gap up. And most of the other ones, I'll turn it all the way up. We've got one more. Let me turn this thing. The one on this side, it's kind of bad. I actually think I can weld that on the same voltage that it's at now. And that looks rough, but it's really not that bad because it's going slightly downhill. Those panels are at about 45 degrees. So that's not going to be that big of a deal. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and weld this one up while that side cools. And then we'll go back over and uh, let that side and weld that side up. All right, I left that at the same voltage as what we were filling that gap with. And on that, you have to make sure when you got a gap that size and you're turning your voltage down to get into it, you have to make sure that you slow your pace down. Because when you try to speed up, every time you miss that side, the wire is going to shoot through that gap. And it's just going to ca cause a problem every time. But on here, I was pulling the weld and I would start, I'd get, I'd get my puddle started, and then pull. 
go back into it, pull, just pausing for a split second on the side right there so the puddle can catch up to it. And a, I guess you'd call it a U-shaped motion. Going back, pausing, going back, pausing, going back, pausing. In a slow fashion, because like I say, the voltage is down. You want to make sure you're burning into it. And you don't want that wire going through there every time because that's just going to stop the weld. You're going to have to catch back into it. Then you got to clean all that mess out of there. So anyway, uh, I do this one here. This gap looks a little bad. And I'll turn the voltage up on that. And then we'll take that from there. All right, I started down here at the bottom and then came down. And I do that a lot is because when I come down and tie into the top of the last weld, the tie-in usually seems to be a little flatter than is if I was starting at the toe at the end of that weld and starting back out. But down here, the gap wasn't as bad. So what I was doing was just running tight little circles all the way down, just tight little circles coming out. Make sure you hit both edges and finish it on out. Here I did the same thing, just tight little circles, tight little circles, came down, tied into the beginning of the last weld. Up here the gap was wider, and right there I should really should have ground that tack out right there and started up there, but I didn't, so that's just a mess up. But right here I started, kind of like what I did over here, I was going side to side. I wasn't coming back into it as far, just coming to the side, pausing, coming to the side, pausing all the way down just back and forth through the low pause and really I maybe I could have paused a little longer it's got a little undercut right there but when you got a wide gap like that and you're trying to get it all in that one pass sometimes you're gonna have to run a cap over it if undercuts gonna be an issue sometimes you'll have to run a cap over it because the weld's gonna lay down into it so flat and uh, convex that sometimes you, just, you might have to run a cap over it. something like this you won't have to it's not an issue here but anyway, I'll turn this thing back around and we'll go ahead and weld up that side we filled up while ago. All right, that's where we had the big gap that we filled up on side to side with a quick low heat pass. And it's still, I mean, it's not as good as you could hope for, but I mean, it's there. And on that, of course, we already had the little field passes on it. And I was just coming along kind of with a wide circle. I probably should have tightened that circle up and turned the heat up. But I was worried about bleeding through it. That's why I didn't turn it up anymore. But it's pretty flat. So anyway, that'll do it on that. That's just a couple tips on how to fill some of those gaps you come across. Uh, I hope it helps somebody. I don't know. It's one way of filling it. I know some people, they will stick a, a piece of metal inside there and f weld it all up together. And I've done it before on some things. I try not to do it. But uh, you can put a little thin strip of metal in there and tack it all down there and use it as a filler, you know. You can even take a welding rod and bust the flux off of it and stick it in there and do it. And it works pretty good. But that's how I like to do it a lot of times. Uh, it just depends on the situation sometimes. So anyway, man, that was just a couple tips. Hope it helps somebody. Uh, I got to finish welding this thing out out here, and it's hot out here, man. It's blazing hot out here right now. This eclipse needs to come on and block the sun out. But anyway, man, hope that helps somebody. We'll see y'all on the next one.